Choo Choo, this video is about structure, how the developer chooses to present the game to the player. Will you create an open world game, or maybe an open world game? In the beginning, there was no structure. Then, a flash of light. Pong is created. Printed on the front of the cabinet is the world's first strategy guide. Insert quarter. Avoid missing ball for high score. With this insider information, players could now master the game of Pong, and Super Pong, and Ultra Pong and puppy pong. Even in the earliest days of video games, rules and conventions emerged. Originality assumed the form of subtle tweaks and variants. Even Pong itself was just a fancier version of table tennis for the Magnavox Odyssey. Breakout was just Pong flipped this way and they said, okay, that, but you play against bricks. Jump to 1993. Doom would set the template for blah, 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 million first person shooters, maze levels with 3D environments, 2D sprites for enemies, shotgun is the best weapon, color coded cheese, health and ammo pickups, aim assist, all became FPS staples. But the thing about this old school level design is oh, I, how, how, how do I get into this? Have I been up here? Oh, I guess I've already been here. I think I've already been here, I don't know. When people think about Doom or Goldeneye, they go, oh yeah, I remember that game, shooting demons, blowing shit up, and what they forget about is walking around an empty map afterwards, looking for a stupid ass key card for 20 minutes, so many identical hallways with dozens of doors leading to more mazes that are filled with switches that open specific doors, some of which are hidden and no waypoints, it becomes a fucking nightmare to navigate some of these levels. Jump to Call of Duty 4, one of the greatest puzzle games, which took a completely opposite approach to level design. While Doom allowed players to explore at their own pace, COD was able to effectively control its tempo with extremely linear design. Less freedom meant no more getting lost. Half-Life starts you on a long-ass train ride, which arrives around the time this guy has completed seven levels in Doom. Halo does a neat trick where it starts you in a spaceship with a bunch of narrow corridors and then you land on Halo. Wow huge open areas. While they would never quite catch up to the chaos and intensity of 2D shooters, 3D shooters started to offer more in terms of atmosphere and narrative. Which brings us to Uncharted 4 Chapter 11. This is where the stars align. You start out in this very crowded market area, people are cooking up food, Nathan starts petting a monkey, then you gotta climb around the church, go up these big ass gears, that stuff falls down, go underground, solve the mystery of the pirate paintings, go back up, the monkey ratted you out, so we can get the jeep kick, start driving down little alleyways, smashing into everything with a big truck shooting at you, dude fucking grapple hooks onto it, starts climbing up the road, chickens attacking you, then you gotta shoot these guys off the motorcycle, hide that one machine. Ram it into them, you crash, shit starts going on fire, blast open the door, and the machine's gonna hop on this guy's right turn, shoot back in the truck. That was one chapter of the game. You go from exploration to platforming to a platforming puzzle to a puzzle to shootout to a shooting car chase in the span of an hour. Compare this to Doom where you shoot or walk. Older RPGs had stories and characters, kinda, but they were mostly dominated by grindy, tedious combat and the closer you come to modern stuff, the more diverse gameplay becomes. You can now, you know, study for tests, clean your room, go to work, file your taxes, go to the doctor. It's important to look at your game and say, okay, 50% of this is riding a horse, 25% is storytelling and cutscenes, and 25% is shootouts. Is riding the horse really the best part of our game? When Grand Theft Auto 3 hit, it became a phenomenon. Did it have the best graphics? Not really. Did it have the best shooting mechanics? <laughs> didn't have the best driving. Hell no. Crazy Taxi blew this shit out of the water. So why was Grand Theft Auto such a big deal? Structure. In Crazy Taxi, if the guy wants to go to Pizza Hut, you gotta drive him to Pizza Hut. In Grand Theft Auto, if this guy wants to go to Pizza Hut, he can't now because you just ran him over. Liberty. That's what made Grand Theft Auto so fresh. The ability to do whatever you want. Jump to Breath of the Wild. Does it have the best graphics? No. Does it have the best combat? Well, combat is pretty fun. Does it have the best dialogue? I'm actually quite embarrassed to say it. It's that sense of freedom that makes it feel new. Once Grand Theft Auto came out, every game had to be Grand Theft Auto. Fucking Jack and Daxter turned into Grand Theft Auto. And the rules of Grand Theft Auto are, okay, you have a huge map to explore, but the main content is only happening here at this very specific point so if you go this way or this way or this way you're going the wrong way now breath of the wild says oh what if we take our main content and spread it over the entire map so whatever way you go is the right way pong doom cod gta by subverting the rules of structure rocket <laughs> 